Um, so, how has life been since since you got the belt, since you got the interim title? Uh, no different, to be honest. Pretty much the same. I just stick doing the same stuff. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm a little bit more popular now, but... I mean, with me, especially, I'm like 6'5". So, I feel like I always stood out anyway, do you know what I mean? It's not like... I was always like, people always wondered who I was and stuff, I got the colliers and everything, so um, I think it was pretty obvious that I was a, a UFC fighter all along anyway, so uh, yeah, maybe it's a little bit more popular, but apart from that, life continues as normal. Well, I, I'm 6'4", people just thought I was a rugby player my whole life, yeah, I, hate, yeah. I hate rugby, at least you, at least wow. you do something good. Well, they, they, used to, they used to think I played rugby until uh, people started learning about the UFC and stuff, yeah, I used to get it every day. So have you trained jiu-jitsu and MMA your whole, mainly your whole life, any other sports? Uh, I played rugby a bit actually. Oh did you? Yeah, yeah, I did play rugby a little bit. Um, but I, I really love fighting, that's what it is. Uh, team sports, I'm not a massive team player to be honest. Like I played a few rugby games where like, I played really well, but we lost. Like the team yeah, lost. Like I didn't really like that, do you know what I mean? And then the, the opposite way, like I played play terrible and the team won. And, no, I'm just more of an individual sport. Do you know Gaelic football? Yeah, yeah I, I know of it. But I'm you should, uh, all you have to do, I played it because I was so big, that you would be good at it. Yeah. Because you're so tall, just stand there, catch the ball, put it in the net, and that's it. All you, you have to do is stand there. No, they don't get paid. I, I knew. Some of them yeah. will get a few, they get set up with jobs and right. stuff. You could be a PE teacher, that's about the job it gets you, but. That doesn't sound great for a professional athlete being a PE teacher. I know they put their whole life into it and now they don't get any money because people want to be like, oh, amateur keeps it, yeah, yeah, yeah. keeps it like comely and, and stuff like that, but. I think they'd rather, I think if you ask the athletes, they'd rather get paid. I, I know <laughs> that. And for the amount of work they put into it and the put they put into their bodies, you know. I suppose like when when you were coming up, you know, you didn't get the money and all you yeah, deserved. Yeah. And how how long did it really take you before you started rating the rewards? Oh, well, I started training. I've been involved in martial arts since I was seven. I'm uh, 31 now, and I would say started making it pay really. I mean, I was earning money and stuff, but. Probably after I had about three, four fights in the UFC was earning money where I could be like pretty comfortable, if you know what I mean. Uh, even like, if you're all like in the UFC and you lose it, you're not earning that much money really. Or if you're on your first contract, 10 and 10, 12 and 12, something like that. After tax and after expenses, it's not, it's not that much money, do you know what I mean? So. Uh, I'm in a position now, though, where I'm earning good money, so I'm content. So did you have to... You said you, you, you taught, uh, taught jiu-jitsu yeah, to, yeah. to your gym, is that what you did? For oh, I taught jiu-jitsu. I uh, personal trained, worked yeah. on the doors a little bit. You were a bouncer, were you? Yeah, I was. I was the worst bouncer ever. Did anyone ever get the knockout? out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was the worst bouncer ever. I never I never did much on that uh, people were actually punching one another. Did you get licensed and all, or were you doing it on the dodge? No, no, I, I got a license, yeah, yeah. Um, I was a cleaner for a time. I don't know, anything, mate, anything that I would, uh, for a time, even, like, deliver parcels and stuff to people's houses, like, uh, not Amazon, but that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I would just do anything that I could just to support my MMA dream. Have you any crazy bouncer stories, though? Uh, yeah, I've got quite a lot of crazy, but how, how crazy do you want to go? Yeah, the craziest we've no, you can curse away, there's oh, no right. limits here, say what you fucking like. <laughs> I think one of the craziest things that I, that's ever happened to me is some girl was like, can I go in the bar? And we were just ready for closing. Like, we were just like, no, no, we're not letting people in now. And that always used to happen, like, people used to try and get in. And uh, we were like, no, 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 we're just not letting people in. And she was like, oh, please, I just really need the toilet. And I was like, no, no, we're not letting people in. Because usually when people just lie and say they need the toilet, they used to go in. Like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not doing that. And, uh, Anyway, this girl was like, please, I really need a toilet. And we are like, no, 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 we stop letting people in. And like, she started getting aggressive and was like, fucking let me in, I need, really need a toilet. And was like, no. Anyway, she then uh, pulled the dress up and had a shit in the street. <laughs> that's, probably the, that's probably the most uh, disturbing thing I've seen. And, uh, and she, was, she was 
She's a big girl. She's a big girl as well. So, yeah, that's uh, that's really what the weirdest non-violent thing I've seen on the door. So oh, I've like, seen a plenty of cows take a shite. I'm sure that's what it was it like. It wasn't great. It wasn't. It wasn't great. And that was at like five a.m. as well. That was. You're not giving her the knock out though. Think of uh, that. That way, you know, that was like quite far away, but still, it was. It wasn't great. Maybe she saw you do it earlier in the night. She, <laughs> she, she, she shared herself. She did. It was wild. I, uh, yeah, I won't forget that one anytime soon. It's quite a while ago it happened. So. You don't miss that. You don't miss the bout. You, you never. You don't think here. Bring the UFC belt. Go bounce and nobody no, will fuck you. No, no, no. I just literally did it for the money. I didn't really enjoy it. To be fair, he worked on a really good door of a nice bar with a good team. The guy who worked, who was the head door, he was like a good friend of mine as well. He was a sound guy, so it was pretty easy for the most part. But still got into a few situations here and there. But for the most part, it was alright. And so, moving on from that, and now you're big on the UFC, do you still have a lot of friends and stuff from back then, or have you kind of had a, a close circle yeah, yeah, last yeah. year? No, I do, do definitely, yeah. I, my my kind of ways which stayed the same as I was when I was like 15 years old, really. I've still got the same friends and stuff. I've got more friends now and less friends here and there, but that that's what life is, isn't it? Like, you move on from certain friends and... Most of my friends now who I spend a lot of time with are in the gym, MMA fights, because I don't really have much time to do m many other stuff. Um, yeah, I, I basically just live life the same as I did, as I always have done, really. So when you have, like, is there anything, hobbies you have or anything outside the gym when you have any free time? What do you like to do? Well, I've got three kids, so they, like, between kids and fighting, I don't have much time, to be honest. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. But uh, for now, I guess I'll, I'll have some more time for hobbies when uh, I'm excited, I guess. So, but football, no, not in the films, not in the games, not in anything like that, no? Not really. No, I, honestly, mate, I don't have much time. I yeah. train in the morning and then go to sleep for a bit, then pick my kids up from school. They've got, they're getting to the age where they've got hobbies now. Like, they, a couple of them train. So well, that's your hobby then, your family's your passion, you know? Yeah, yeah, so I take, yeah, I guess my, that, that, I take my kids training, they, they've they got friends, so I have to take them to like play dates and come back, then I train again and then it's bedtime, you know what I mean, yeah. days are over. Oh, it's just a testament to how hard you work, you know, that is, but you love it, you know what I mean, you yeah, love yeah. it, you love all this. Mate, honestly, I don't really have much time to be interested in anything else, it's not like I'm not interested, um, do you, even like watching the UFC, I don't really have time really to keep up with the events anymore there's that many events I'm just like yeah I just, I'm just busy man I'm just busy constantly well yeah it's, it's hard to be to keep up with the UFC like me and my brothers do it every weekend we stay up at 6 o'clock in the morning watching in the air yeah. every weekend you know I work on that I know a lot of people are complaining about that happening with your fight but yeah. Look, it's, it's your, it's your, this is what all, us fans have to put up with but I'm sure you don't you know it's putting a lot of pressure on you yeah well I'm just, I'm just, I'm just busy, man. Especially like when you get, um, like higher up the ranks, you have more stuff to do. Media obligations, your sponsors. You know what I mean. I don't have much free time to to do anything else apart from be a UFC fighter and be a dad. You know what I mean. I don't really have anything else. And so this fight in, in Manchester. Do you know, can you tell me if it's for, are they going to upgrade the title or is it for the other? Honestly, at the moment, I don't know any details at all. I, I honestly would like love to tell you, but I don't have any. Like, I was in Vegas last week, spoke to the UFC, they don't even know what's going on. So, right now, they're just trying to figure stuff out and I'm just waiting. So, you don't, do you have no idea of an opponent don't or anything? Don't know an opponent. Don't know um, if it's going to be for a interim or a... Undisputed or anything, I don't know anything. I only learned online that it's going to be at 5 a.m. I didn't even know that. They did I don't see how that, like, I was speaking, how is that allowed? Because, like, I thought things had to end before 11, Me you too. know, concerts and stuff. Like. I think they can't, I read somewhere that they can't serve alcohol past a certain time. Yeah. So I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know. Hopefully, it makes tickets a bit cheaper instead of I also, 300 pounds in the nosebleeds. Yeah. Um, do you think it should be upgraded for the, for the main title, no matter who you fight? Uh, and that's the UFC's business. I, like, I feel like I'm the best heavyweight in the world. I feel like I should have the opportunity to prove that. But I've got years to prove it, so I'm happy just to do my job and fight people. Um, how has the UFC reacted to you, like publicly calling out Jones and Stipe and you taking the piss out of them and stuff? You know, how, yeah. is, how, how have they reacted to that? Oh, they love it, mate. Yeah. They love it. Like uh, it's all promotion for them, isn't it? So they can. 
they just say listen just keep doing your thing yeah so i don't really know what that means so much i don't know how far i can push it but um i'm saying what i feel and and you have to hear a lot about freedom of speech and stuff which i don't like so uh they, they never once said like tom stay away from this topic ever but how can you not get through to them in terms of like how much you've done for UFC in the past and since you've been in it you've fought yeah, yeah. non-stop you've had lying cards you know you'll fight anyone you've been so active how can you not get through to them and it's just like why he's giving Jones that special treatment Jones has his own rules doesn't he and uh, that's between him and the UFC I don't, I don't know I guess I have to prove myself more to, to get to his level of uh Rules, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I think you have to break the rules a few yeah, times to get yeah. another rule. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. First, yeah. I'm breaking more rules. I don't know. Yeah, come out here. <laughs> you embark the head of me. You want my <laughs> camera? I don't do nothing. And then put it out. Um, no, but like you're up for fighting anyone. You know, there's a couple like Curtis Blades. I don't, I, I don't really think it happened. I know. Like, how did you bounce back from that fight in London when you had your injury just a few seconds into the fight? How did you mentally go back? Like anything can happen in the cage. Um, just a, a long year of re reflecting, I guess. You know, I had a really good physio, I had really good people around me, and uh, I needed some time to decide what I wanted to do in my life, really. And that really gave me that. As I said, I'm, I'm a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. I don't stop. I, I go from training session to training session, country to country, errand to errand, kid to kid. Like it's just non-stop, and um, that made me stop for a while and think about what I really really want and what I really want is to be the best heavyweight ever and I'm working on that now I've been working on that since I came back changed some stuff um, got a really really good training situation a really good balance of like work and home life which is important and uh, yeah moving forward and so now with like there's so much excitement heavyweight now because you actually are at if you're not holding up the division you're even fighting you're defending an interim belt which everybody else would hold out for the fight you know you see even michael chandler holding out near two years to fight mcgregor you know this it's a credit to yourself that you're saying so active and you know do you think that maybe you're underappreciated by fans and underappreciated by the ufc for that uh no i don't feel underappreciated i feel like i feel like i'm only just starting out right, to be honest with you in my career and I feel like I've got years to prove what I'm all about. And when it's all said and done, we can all make a judgment on me then. But for right now, I see the fighting as like kind of a journey. Like, it's up and down, it's got ebbs and flows. It's one minute you're on top of the world, next minute you're at rock bottom. And it's just, it's kind of like a reflection of life, that's how it works. And um, when it's all said and done, we'll let people have their opinion on what kind of person I am or what kind of fighter I am. And until then, I'm just cracking on and going fight to fight. So do you think that the injury was kind of somewhat a blessing in the yeah, it absolutely was yeah it was terrible at the time it was fucking awful but it made me a stronger person definitely but in the fans eyes everybody knows it wasn't really a fight you know what I mean yeah. everyone thinks that you know Curtis Blades you, you could you could beat him I know you won't underestimate him but yeah. you know you could beat him in that fight would have went that decision so you know fans have got their back they have got your back in that way and everybody wants to see you do well everybody wants to see you fight jones you know you've got best on your back you've got joe rogan talking about you. you've got everyone seems yeah. to be on your back you're the man to do it and so how does it feel does it feel any pressure or do you feel any of that no that's people's opinions what does that matter really it's just what people say uh that's something that i'm learning as i'm growing uh just in life just what people say sometimes is pretty irrelevant right people's opinions of you good or bad it doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things ultimately I have to win fights that's what's important to me what people say yeah it's, it's brilliant mate it's really nice that these people I look up to Bisping, Joe Rogan etc it's really nice and saying good stuff about me but if they're saying bad stuff about me it doesn't in the grand scheme of things does it really affect my life not really uh, what, what matters is what it says on my record and winning is more important to me than anything else and so you were at UFC 300, and how was that? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, one of the one of the best weeks I've ever had, ever. It was incredible. And were you able to? Did you go just because it was 300, or did you hear? Were you? Did you get any sizing up of Alex for her? Oh, what no, did you no, think no, that? I didn't go for that reason. Um, I went for a few reasons to be honest. I wanted to. You know, I've got my YouTube channel going now. I wanted to I see do a bit of that stuff, a bit of YouTubing. We had a few experiences that's been recorded that's not been brought out yet, so that'd be good. Um, I had a lot of media and stuff to do, and I'm not over that side of the world too often. You know, I'm based here in the UK, so I had a lot of like 
quite important work to do there in terms of media. Had some sponsor meetings, had a meeting with the UFC. I uh, obviously wanted to go to 300, so there was a whole load of stuff that I was behind on that I wanted to go to the States for. And uh, we managed to do a lot in a week, which I'm really, really happy with. It was a great trip. And so, now that once Alex said that he wanted to compete at heavyweight, you know, you've said before you thought he was sizing you up, and, and a lot of people, fans, have made that dream match. Yeah. And the media and was kind of went that way. Have you put much thought into that? No, I put thought into it when uh, I signed a contract. Do you think that he really has any chance? How do you think that fight even goes to, with think, your natural size? I think he's a dangerous guy. I think he's really good. I think he's a world champion in his own right. And he for sure has a big chance of beating me. I think it's really, a really, really good fight that can be made whenever. Whenever they want to make it. I know that Alex is probably up for it. I'm up for it. So whenever the UFC want it, I'm sure we both, it'll happen one day. That would be the match everybody wants for. He, he wants to fight. fight again. Yeah, I think it'd be a good fight, yeah. Well, um, so moving on then, uh, what? who did you look up to in the UFC and MMA when you were growing up? Is there any fighters? Oh, loads. Um, GSP, John Jones, Michael Bisping, BJ Payne, Mark Coleman. There's so many, you know, I I'd, I'd have to go through the generations. There's no fighters that I don't look up to, really. But they're just like the ones that are just popped into my mind. Just, just think. Was there it. never like a certain fight where you were like, right? Or maybe you were training that long by the time you were fully yeah. into the UFC. But there like, was never a fight where it was like, or a fighter was like, I want to do that because of him. You know, kind of way. Yeah, from the GSP, I think GSP is the ultimate martial artist in my opinion. Uh, I just think he's a great guy as well, and I just love, love his style. I love what he's all about. He's just an athlete and a fighter, which is what I'm trying to be. I'm not trying to be one or the other. I want to be. The perfect mix of both so yeah just be he's my he's you, you kind of emulate him as a heavyweight because there's not many heavyweights i try to i yeah, try to there's not many heavyweights or as, as, as proficient in jiu-jitsu and try and use it even though would you say that would be your main strength is it is the jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu, um i don't know i think i'm i think that i'm good i'm not a specialist in any area yeah. like if i was to spar like yeah. top level professional boxer they'd beat me up if i was to roll with like some top level heavyweight grappler they, they, they'd smash me but if we do it all together that's what I'm good at if right. I like put it all together and uh, that's what it's all about because that's, that's the game I wouldn't want to be just a specialist at one specific thing because you can get exposed if you can't like if you're great at jiu-jitsu uh, for example but you can't get onto the ground then it's irrelevant in it so I'm trying to be good at everything together I think that the, the media is kind of hyped up that's like well you are so dangerous on the ground so fighters are trying to stand with you and you're yeah. just knocking them out is that something that you had throughout your whole career um i mean i originally started with jiu-jitsu but i think my, my stand-up's equally as good as my jiu-jitsu um i don't know I, I like to you know if i can get it to the point now where people think my stand-up's really good and i've got my grappler that'd be nice because then i can rely on my grappler like you always got to take people by surprise i think um people a bit of hype bit of talk people buy into that like someone started saying oh he's got the you know really really good boxing he's got he's a great boxer people forget about the grappling quick and that's what i want so um i'm not too fussed to be honest were you surprised by how quick the pavlovich fight went yeah 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 i thought it was going to have to be a long fight he's a big strong guy a lot of muscle on him and I thought that I'd have to tire him out to finish him. But uh just takes one shot heavyweight, man. That's, that's Well there was a lot of when that fight happened, I don't know if you've heard did you ever hear there's three hit there was three hits in that fight. Three three hits? Yeah. He, you hit him? Yeah. He hit the floor. Yeah. The ambulance hit ninety. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> never heard that one uh, that's, that's what we say by in Ireland when somebody that's what, see when you're next to bouncer yeah, you yeah. say that you say it's three hits in this fight right you know what is it I'm, all, I'm also I'm, I'm not going to be a bouncer <laughs> time soon so I'm, say it with me you, I hit you I hit you you hit the floor floor ambulance hits 90 the ambulance hits 90 <laughs> <laughs> no, never, never heard that before that's, uh, that has to be your line get out of the back of a t-shirt alright right. um, and so just to finish it off you know have you ever fought in Manchester before? Was your first pro fight in Manchester? Yes, I fought in Manchester before. Yeah, How'd that go? It was alright. There was about 100 people there. So there's something very different. Yeah. There'll be 100 people awake, I think, by the yeah. time yeah. it gets yeah. by I hope not. I hope there's 100,000 people awake. But yeah. But uh, we're going to start the trip. Yeah, it'll be a good time. A good time, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Tom.